Hello and welcome to Townhill Junction. Today we're going to do another unboxing, meet another member of the fleet, this time the ScotRail Class 43 HSTs. We're going to do a short review and get it running around the test track here at Townhill Junction until we get that layout up and running, hopefully sometime later this year. So the ScotRail HST Class 43s are some of the newest liveried trains in the country. However, they're not new trains. These trains have been stalwarts of the UK rail fleet for a long time now. But in 2018, Scott Rail made the decision after a survey was taking place when Abellio took over the Scott Rail franchise. They concluded that if passengers were wanting to go long distances between the bigger cities, they were much less likely to use ScotRail and would rather go with one of their competitors. Main competitors ran longer express trains. They didn't stop, had more room and were designed for comfort. This was compared to ScotRail's class 158s and 170s that whilst modern, fairly recently refurbished, didn't have the room or the comfort that bringing this fleet into service could bring. The ScotRail Inter Seven Cities links up the seven cities of Scotland through express train services. ScotRail ordered 54 power cars, uh, which will be run with 120 Co Mark III sliding door co coaches. These have recently been completely refurbished and we'll do a short video when Hornby's model version of them come in later this month. These trains were formerly in use with GWR and have been brought up to Scotland and been added to the fleet since 2018. Originally some of the GWR livery was still in use but as the refurbishments gone on four car ScotRail Class 43 HST sets have now been in use. The aim is to have all these trains converted to five car sets once the initial order for four car sets has been delivered. The four coaches include a first class coach with 30 really comfy big leather seats. If you've not had a chance to go in one of them yet, they are one of some of the comfiest coaches I've ever sat on. They have a two plus one format, whereas the rest of the standard coaches run the usual two plus two on either side of the coach. Complimentary food and drink is also offered in first class, but there's a shop for normal passengers to purchase their own. This really re does revolutionise the offering that, to the Scottish commuter, and especially for those business passengers or those used to travelling long distances around the country. All these Class 43s run MTUs. These were replaced under GWR about 10 years ago. So are fairly modern and fairly new um, whilst they sit in these old body shells. So let's now look at the model. As we can see from the box we see these two wonderful pictures. The models have this fantastic livery that we'll open up and have a look at next. The seven cities of Scotland are Aberdeen, Stirling, Inverness, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dundee and Perth and these trains will link them all up through direct train services, calling it only a few stops in between. We can see it depicted in these wonderful photos, uh, this quite striking livery from the dark blue through to the greys have different symbols representing the different places, whether it be Edinburgh Castle, the Scott Monument in Stirling, the Finniston Crane in Glasgow. The box is standard Hornby, it doesn't show you what's inside, but the pictures on the outside and graphics depict it fairly well and give you a good idea of what we're going to get to look at next. They go into a lot of detail about the history of the class 43s from the early 1970s all the way through to the present day. Really modelers throughout the country love to collect these class 43s. They're incredibly popular and come with so many different liveries in the post privatisation era. This however has to be my favourite livery. It's striking, it's modern, it's sleek. It looks fantastic and brings a new lease of life to these old. So let's have a look at the rest of the box. 
before we get in. You can see there's some fantastic graphics on the side. And then the descriptions along the side in different languages. I've ordered two chips. Um, they actually came very recently, um, which will convert the ScotRail 43s into a DCC sound version. If you're buying the chips yourself, check which age you're doing. These two are going to be MTUs, where some of the older ones have the, have the Valletta engines on board. So make sure that if you're modelling, you make sure you've purchased the right one. Both will work, but if you're wanting to be more prototypical, that's what I'd advise you check. So let's open the box now and get them out. So Hornby have their usual simple cardboard design and the quite dated polystyrene innards. You don't get the same presentation that you do with some of the other suppliers. So we get a simple box, a bit of protective card, and then we have our instruction manual. So you can see it's DCC ready. This is the one that I've gone for this time. Um, the advantage with Hornby provide their own chips and sound chips. So it should just be a case of setting that up, which we'll do in a video later on. You can see there's some guidance on how to fit the DCC chip itself, how to remove the body and to check. There's also instructions on how to do lubrication and to remove the body um, to make any changes, including putting a driver in, etc. And wonderful safety notices. So here we have the box itself and we can just see this teasing shot of the HSDs. We're going to take the top car out first. Very carefully. As we can see, it's absolutely stunning. The details, fantastic. You can see small details, like the load evenly distributed. Electrical warning symbols, the gratings for the air intakes, the doors, if you can just see that doors are spring loaded. Again, what they offer in a model like this, I'm not too sure, whereas passenger doors might be more useful. And we can see the wonderful detailing around the bottom here. And we have the two bogies again in a lot of detail. The guards compartment used for luggage and for storage of bicycles really does actually help. And you've, I've seen this in service at Edinburgh and Dundee and Aberdeen, and it does seem to make a big difference. We can see the details here, Edinburgh Castle. The obvious iconic shape, Wallace Monument is one that sticks out as well. And this wonderful livery. The ScotRail logo much smaller on this than it is in any of the rest of the fleet. Um, as they've gone for the striking livery. It's like a classier business version. If we go to the top, again we can see some decent detail. Um, it's quite glossy. Um, whilst that gloss makes the sides, the, the paint finish look fantastic um, on the top. It does look a little bit shiny. But you can see wonderful amounts of detail, including rivets. But you can also see these fans here. Um, right the way through. I'm going to move this around so you'll see it as the camera focuses at different things. So in the last video we might look to do it. Now compared to the old HSTs, Ormby's new retailing really has made a difference. These details around the vents at the side here and the exhaust. As we look at the back of the power car you can see you've got a window through into the luggage compartment that you would see in real life and some wonderful details warning and also this wonderful little bit of detail that this this orange line that goes around the top if we turn and look to the cab we can see the hst with its gwr styled yellow that goes above the lights there's some detailing about the lights itself and you can just see in there the cab 
has a good amount of detail in it as well with telephone buttons and it's much more realistic than what we've seen in some of the older models. I've got a very old class 43 that I had as a kid, one of the intercity ones from the 80s um, and this is really a huge step change and we'll maybe do a comparison with that one day. You may have noticed that I have had this out of the box before and you can see I've fitted a hunt coupling to it. They come fitted as standard with the but because due to the NEM fittings it's easy to replace and all this does is just show you the difference in if I hold it to the back there you can see the difference uh, in length it's much longer um, on the Hornby standard fit version they do have it does come with some close coupling of its own which are good um, I do like these they are a bit more fiddly um, but if you want them closer they are much more useful than the standard now this is the power car um, you can feel by the weight um, and again what we're going to do is get the girlfriend's ooh la la scales out and we'll just see how heavy before we get it on the track and get some running so here we are in the ooh la la scales and we we'll set it to zero so let's see how heavy this comes in at we're looking at 508 grams, so half a kilogram of pressure which pushes down um, which when we're pulling rakes. Less of an issue for ScotRail as they're only running four or five car rakes um, compared to the 11s you see if you're running prototypical from elsewhere. So we're going to take the, power, the main power car off and we're going to put the dummy power car on now. It's coming in at 184 grams. Again, it looks absolutely striking. When you see them side by side, you can see all the seven cities and all depicted on either side of the train. A smaller version of this does go on the MK3 coaches, which we'll review hopefully sometime over the next couple of weeks. What we want to do now is get them running on the test track. So here we are set up on the test track. We can see we've got the power car here and the dummy power car sitting in the siding. Now with only a little bit of power, we can get to move really smoothly and with the hunt couplings just join up. You can see if we flash the lights, there's running lights that are directional, um, so obviously red in reverse, white going forward. There is also cab lights fitted to these models and that's the standard so they'll run on the DC version as well as the obviously when you run DCC you can then have a bit more So control. we're ready to move out the sidings now. And we're going to see how she runs on the test track. Do a little bit of light running, you'll see these forward lights coming on and the cab light. And it's amazing with such little power that she's moving so well. You can just see those cab lights working there. You can see with the hunt couplings it just brings them much closer together. The standard Hornby ones would be a big enough gap to get your finger through whereas this brings it much closer together, much more prototypical um, for your layout. What we want to do now is some additional running and we'll see you running just more. That was with a tiny amount of power. She was so smooth whereas now we can put a bit more power and see how she performs. She has a high speed train after all. We're now going to run reverse, so obviously using the magnetic couplings um, and you'll see those running lights in the opposite direction. See them showing bright red. There's obviously no trouble running in the opposite direction. Trouble's more on my camera, just trying to keep up with it. So let's do a bit more running.
So what do we think of these models? Retailing at about £200, they're fantastic. They're very, very detailed. They're great in DC operation. I'm looking forward to changing them to DCC. The detail is fantastic, very, very accurate. And I think the livery itself, where the credit has to go to ScotRail, is fantastic. It's great to see these. It's great to see these trains joining the Scottish fleet. And it's great to see proper express trains being run around Scotland. And this gives a real alternative choice for passengers. We hopefully review the Hornby coaches very soon in our next video. So please tune in then. As always, I'm very new to this. So please provide any comments, good or constructive criticism, in the comment section. You can also find us on Facebook. Thanks for coming to Town Hill Junction. Hope to see you soon.